Metal Jesus, and I'm back again with something a little different this time. I'm actually going to be covering TV plug and play consoles. And you know what? These things don't get enough love, and they're often really interesting. We're going to go over some of the more interesting looking consoles, because that's kind of what I like about it, and also some of the games that come with them. Often they're original games that you can't find anywhere else. Sometimes they're crap, sometimes they're not. And uh, we're going to get into that. Let's take a look. So the first plug and play console I want to show you is this really interesting Scooby-Doo one. So here's a Scooby-Doo one. This is the mystery machine. This is the van that the, uh, the Scooby gang drives around in and solves mysteries. It's got a little button on the front that can take you to the menu system. And then it's also got a sculpted Scooby back there. It's pretty awesome. And one button and a joystick that we're going to cover a little bit more in depth. This plug and play comes with five separate Scooby-Doo games and uh, I believe they're all original. The first one here is a quick little driving game. You're trying to drive and pick up the other members of the Scooby gang. The goal is to try to pick up the Scooby gang member as quickly as possible. And you have to avoid a bunch of stuff on the road. You also have to avoid ghouls and ghosts and maybe other cars that are out to try to get you. There's a couple power-ups and things like that. It's a relatively simple game, but it's surprisingly fun. Next, there's a Frogger-like game on here where you're trying to get to the goal as quickly as possible, jumping on floating logs, trying to avoid alligators, things like that. Relatively simple, but kind of fun. There's also some random 2D adventure style games on here as well, and they're okay. Although there's one particular game in here where it's, I wouldn't call it a stealth game, but basically you play a Scooby-Doo and you have to go through these colored doors and you have to try to find the exit without dying or running into other ghosts and, and skeletons and things like that. It's actually a really fun game. I was, I was surprised. This is probably the best one on this. However, one of my favorite parts of this console is the glow in the dark handle. How cool is that? Now for all you Star Wars fans out there like me, this is a really cool plug and play. And here we have the Millennium Falcon in plug and play form. It's actually pretty cool. It's, it's got a lot of detail to it and it just feels really nice. It's, uh, it's a cool little tribute to Star Wars. On the top here, it's worth noting that the, uh, the joystick on the top is actually analog, which is good for some stuff and not so great for others. This plug and play comes with four Star Wars games and to start it off, you have a lightsaber duel game. It's like a fighting game, uh, 2D, kind of old school. And uh, I, you know, honestly, I think this is probably the weakest of them. Maybe it's because I suck at fighting games, but I just found the analog stick to be really clunky with it. However, things get a lot better in the next game where it's a top-down shooter. And I love my shmups, and this is a pretty decent one. Again, the analog stick feels a little wonky, but it's totally doable. I actually got pretty far in this. On Hoth, you have a bit of a real-time strategy game. I actually think this is a really fun game. This is actually a pretty decent little game where you control a guy down below who has to kind of manage and take out the enemy as they approach your, your base. And so really strategic. It's all real-time. It's actually pretty fun. And then the last game is a Return of the Jedi game, which is, it's okay. It, it's not great, but you're on Endor, and then you also go and you take out the Death Star. And I found parts of this to be pretty fun, but overall it was just okay. Now who doesn't love SpongeBob SquarePants? Now right off the bat, I have to say, this is just one of the funniest looking plug and plays of all time. It's so awesome. SpongeBob is hilarious anyways, and this is a great looking console. And wouldn't you know it, actually this has some of the most fun games of all of my plug and plays. I mean, who knew? Now the games start out great with a Breakout or Arkanoid clone, which plays really well, has a lot of power-ups that are fun. Next you move on to a side-scrolling shooter. This is an okay shooter. I, I almost think it's a little simple and uh, I don't know, it's decent. But next up is this really weird 
kind of, I don't even know how you describe it. It, it feels like an Atari 2600 game uh, where you have to prevent these hooks from getting into your friends. And then you have this kind of, uh, I almost want to say Zelda-esque adventure game here. And then the last game is a kind of old school Nintendo Donkey Kong style 2D platforming game that is actually kind of fun. I mean, it's, it's surprisingly well made. Actually, this whole plug and play is one of the better that I own. And uh, who knew, you know, it's, it's pretty funny. It looks great and most of the games are actually pretty cool. And finally, this really weird and interesting Miss Pac-Man plug and play. At first glance, you're kind of like, what? What's going on here? This is kind of bulky. What is what is this? Well, it's actually a wireless plug and play and it's kind of unique because of that. On the bottom, you have the base, which takes four AA batteries, by the way, and that connects to your television. And then up above here, you have the wireless controller, which also takes four AA batteries. So yes, to even play this, you have to have eight AA batteries. That's really its only downside because Everything else about it actually is really good. Included in this are seven nearly perfect arcade ports of Namco games. And there's a bunch of great ones in here, including of course, Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man just never seems to get old. I love that game. You also have Galaga, one of the best old school shooters out there. You also have Mappy, which is a is an arcade game I wasn't actually familiar with. And so it's kind of fun to have it on this and play it almost as though it's for the first time. So really fun game. Also included is a really awesome multi-directional shooter called Bosconian. And this is just a fantastic game, super fun to play, and it plays really well on this too. And then to round it out, you have Rally X, Xevious, also another awesome top-down shooter, and Pole Position, which actually uses the turning motion of the joystick. So a fantastic collection and you know, despite the fact that it requires eight batteries, which is kind of a bummer, but man, this is a really cool and certainly interesting and unique plug and play to own. So that's a quick look at some of the plug and plays in my collection. I've actually got a ton more. And as a matter of fact, I did a video about a year ago covering some of the other ones, specifically the ones that are emulating like say classic consoles like the Atari 2600. You should definitely check it out if this interests you. I would love to know in the comments what you thought. I mean, is this a legitimate form of collecting or is it just kind of lame? I don't know. Personally, as you can tell, I find it really interesting if I can find them for relatively inexpensive. I mean, most of these consoles I bought for only a couple of dollars. I don't think I spent more than $4 on any of them, which to me seems like a pretty good deal. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel and thanks for subscribing. Take care.